A law was being broken, and we knew it. I'm shocked. I'm truly shocked. I just put my hands up and prayed that he wouldn't shoot me. He wasn't arrested and charged until we started asking questions. People will be outraged when they hear this. Everything, it came from your report. Coming forward was the right thing to do because this can't ever happen again. If it hadn't been for Channel 2, I might not be sitting here now. As we close out 2021, another challenging year on top of what seemed like an impossible year, we want to reflect on all the changes we here at CBS2 have been a part of. Thanks for joining us. I'm Erica Sargent. And I'm Brad Edwards. The CBS2 investigators have a reputation of getting results, changing lives, and changing laws through our investigations. This year, there's a lot to report. We first told you about this story in 2020. A law was being broken and we knew it. But for more than a month, we were met with finger pointing and pushback all over why the most intimate case details of child sex assault victims were public. We believed we shouldn't have had access to that information and we were right. Finally, this year, some accountability. In your tenure, would you say this is your most significant achievement? I would say yes. That achievement, these two state statutes, laws that protect the identities of sexual assault victims, first of their kind in the country. Victims have been victims, they've been traumatized by this, and I think it's important that we protect that identity. But these laws first began as a CBS2 investigation while researching a different topic. Excuse me at the public kiosk at the Daily Center. Okay, I'm ready to print. We were able to get unfettered access. Hi, I'm just looking to print out documents from the computers. To child sex assault files. Thank you. And print them. Little kids' dates of birth, addresses, dastardly details. Our findings? Appalled. I'm shocked. I'm truly shocked. I mean, people will be outraged when they hear this. They were. So was the new clerk. It's my number one priority here when I first got here. Congratulations. Thank you. In late 2020, Clerk Iris Martinez took over one of the largest county circuit court systems in the country. We're pulling up the case. In charge of logistics, hardware, software, paperwork, decades of court case files. Our findings, we had no business finding. There was already a 1986 law on the books preventing such access to children's files, but it was vague and ignored. Outgoing clerk Dorothy Brown not only denied responsibility, but she only began concealing the documents when state's attorney Kim Fox threatened to sue her. And we found out the problem was exponentially worse. Thank you so much. Take care. A law was being broken, and we knew it. After viewing our stories, they did not, did not fix it. In they... launching her own internal inquiry, Clerk Martinez teamed up with a trio of legislators, formulated, passed, and got the new laws signed. Stronger legislation for children and a new law for adult victims. Those laws will take effect on the first of the new year. And it will take many more months for Cook County to conceal the remaining 70,000 adult cases. The new laws say any outside parties wanting access will have to request it from a judge who will then decide whether to temporarily unseal the file. There are also new safeguards in place for anyone requesting copies of records like these to prevent them from ending up in the wrong hands. We'll follow up to make sure all the counties are doing their due diligence. A 10 year old girl sexually abused by multiple men. Those men known to police remain free until the CBS2 investigators got involved. Our Dave Savini revealed how the system failed to protect her despite years of warnings and calls for help. She should be playing with dolls right now. She should be going to birthday parties right now. Instead, a 10-year-old girl whose face we are not showing and some details we are not sharing for her protection was locked in a psychiatric hospital while her abusers remained free for months. We have to get them off the street. Including this Riverdale man, 37-year-old Samuel Brown. He is accused of meeting the girl online and taking her to a Chicago area garage in May of 2020 and sexually assaulting her. 
So when you see and you read about something like this happening to a little girl, um, you know, I'm just as outraged and, and uh, frustrated as anybody else. A total of five men are accused of assaulting the girl since she was seven, but none of them were charged with a felony until our CBS2 investigators exposed a pattern of police failing to put the men behind bars. The CBS2 investigators obtained police reports involving five of the girls accused abusers, and in at least three of the cases, rape kits were performed. So in this case, involving this child, the results of any of the, any rape kits performed have not been brought to the state's attorney's office yet. Not for filing felony charges. But then suddenly, the very next day after this interview, Chicago police arrested Samuel Brown on felony charges for sexually assaulting the little girl. A rape kit done on the girl in May matched Brown's DNA. Why was Brown's DNA in the system? He was already a registered child sex offender. You'd think with that key evidence, CPD would have immediately arrested Brown once they had a match. But CPD sat on the results, allowing him to remain free for four months. Dave's investigation revealed that when police found the little girl at the Grand Motel in October, they took her home instead of a hospital to be examined. Because of his reporting, CPD is reviewing how their department handles these types of crimes. Pass or fail, her livelihood depended on it. And it was all in the hands of a state inspector caught on camera groping her at her doggy daycare business. Chicago police were investigating the case for months, but just one week after CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey broke the story, the inspector was fired. Leah Bindick started her doggy daycare boarding and grooming business all by herself in 2016. With a giant loan, a graveyard shift as a Lyft driver to make ends meet, and a vision. I love the fact that when we make a dog happy, that makes the owner happy. Good job, Lex. Good girl. Now she has three locations and counting, including this one in Bucktown. Because she provides overnight boarding, she's required to have an annual inspection by the Illinois Department of Agriculture. Cook County has just one inspector, this guy, Jose Guillen. I knew that like there was a line being crossed, but I was repeatedly reminded by him that he was the only inspector. And before she got the pass, he asked for a hug. And one of those hugs that all women know are very uncalled for and inappropriate. I didn't know what to do. So just like, let it happen and be over. Sorry. If this story sounds unbelievable, it suddenly became more believable in 2019 when Guillen came in for the next annual inspection. And their encounter was, by chance, captured on the store's surveillance cameras. And I have a laptop and I was showing him, you know, turning the laptop to show him the vaccination records for certain dogs. And um, he felt that he needed to see them on the other side of the counter. And then he starts putting his hand on my shoulder, on my arm, on my back. At one point, the video shows his hand moving from her arm to her rear end. He's holding a clipboard as he's hugging me, and it's not signed off yet that we passed. And then what, so what do I do? What do I do? Again, that inspector was fired after Megan's report. Since then, several other women reached out to Megan with similar complaints. They agreed to an exclusive interview with her, revealing a disturbing pattern that went unchecked until we got involved. You can watch their stories online on our website. We'll be right back. For three days only at Ashley Home Stores, home for the holiday sales event. Save 20% off your entire purchase or get 0% interest financing for 36 months with no minimum purchase and no money down. Friday through Sunday only at Ashley Home Store. Spruce up your home with appliance and storage upgrades at Menards. Check out the largest in-stock selection of appliances from top brands like Whirlpool, Amana. KitchenAid, Maytag, and Criterion for energy-saving upgrades. Whether it's extra storage or elevating your living space, Dakota's great selection of square edge shelving offers beautiful storage solutions. Save big money on storage and appliance upgrades at Menards. Give the perfect gift this season with a Menards gift card today. For a psoriasis, then psoriatic arthritis. 
Even walking was tough. I had to do something. I started Cosentix. Cosentix can help you move, look, and feel better by treating the multiple symptoms of psoriatic arthritis. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentix. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections, some serious, and the lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to. Tell your doctor if your Crohn's disease symptoms develop or worsen. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Watch me. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. Hold the presses, roll a second, keep the game close to my heart, my precious. Over time, tend to get overzealous when the moment's mine, I'm gonna oversell it. Ashley Home Stores, home for the holidays, mattress inventory blowout is going on now. Save up to 50% off clearance mattresses and adjustable bases, in stock and ready to take home today. These holiday savings won't last long, only at Ashley Home Store. Welcome back. You're watching the CBS2 Investigators Get Results. There's a box for black, for white, Native American, Asian, and Latino. But for Arab Americans, no box. That issue at the center of a CBS2 investigation in May, revealing how city, county, and state agencies were failing Arab Americans. And as the life-saving vaccine was rolling out, that lack of official data made it difficult for community groups to get proper funding and convince Arab Americans to get their shots. But CBS2's Dorothy Tucker set out on a mission to change that. Spoiler alert, she did. This matters to us. This being counted and being part of the larger community is important. The push for answers started with this email on April 21st, sent to the state asking that very question, why? The immediate response from the governor's office, we're working on it. Eight days later, we're told the MENA category, Middle Eastern North African, has now been added. Only when we check the state's dashboard used by the public to track vaccine distribution, it wasn't there. We kept checking all of May, most of June, nothing. On June 28th, the governor had a press conference. Are you going to keep your promise to the Arab American community to add that designation? Well, I certainly will talk to IDPH. I don't know where that is in process, but we'll make sure to get back to you about it. They did. This is what the community was waiting on. Oh, the Middle Eastern North Africa. I Sorry, I had to see it with my eyes. I was like, Yes, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> Finally, a box for those who identify as Middle Eastern or North African. It's a stepping stone. Yeah. It's the first step to many more yeah. steps of being counted and visible and recognized as a community. The goal now to educate the community about the new box and be counted as Arab Americans for the first time in Illinois history. Yeah. We are visible now, we exist. Our reporting and relentless hounding push the state to create a new category for vaccine data. Now the local Arab community is using our reporting to push the state to create a category for Arabs on all forms, not just ones relating to COVID-19. They're still in the early stages, but we, of course, will continue to follow up. If you received a speeding ticket from the city of Chicago this year, check your mail. You may have received a refund, all thanks to a CBS2 investigation. Back in June, our Dorothy Tucker uncovered minor mistakes on two city signs that warned drivers about the speed cameras ahead, ultimately saving Chicago drivers nearly $2 million. They said the tickets were issued in error and we are dismissing the tickets. Yep. The city admitted it was wrong. That doesn't happen every day. And it only happened this time because the CBS2 investigators discovered something the city of Chicago missed. We found this warning sign on Cicero that leads to a speed camera around the corner on Lawrence Avenue had a mistake. It read photo enforced 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. This is the problem. It should have been p.m. The first ticket, I paid it. A while later, I got a second ticket. And I was about... Ooh your report. Signs like these were last checked in May. Your investigative report in reference to the erroneous signs. Both the rights tickets were issued after 9.30 a.m. Based on the misprint on the warning sign 
outside of the enforcement time. So I thought I'm going to contest the ticket. Her evidence, our CBS2 investigation. Stating that these tickets should not have been issued in the Times and also photos of the actual signs. Where'd you get the photos from? Your report, your report. So everything, it came from your report. So who's going to pay for this nearly $2 million mistake? According to a city spokesperson, the vendor, Vera Mobility, is partially responsible. They run the speed camera program and didn't catch the misprint. But crews from the Chicago Department of Transportation put up the signs and never noticed they were wrong. <laughs> You're the one that picked up on it. I don't think they would, no one, no one else ever noticed it. And no one will pay. The CBS2 investigators are told the city could enforce a clause in the vendor's contract and make it pay, but a warning is all they got. That was our Dorothy Tucker getting things done. See how the story began? Just head to our website, cbschicago.com. You're watching CBS2 investigators get results. We'll be right back. This holiday season, your local Acura dealer is breaking out the toys. Acura season of performance. Tracks sold separately. Visit your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. To be a thriver with metastatic breast cancer means asking for what we want and need. And we need more time. So we want Kiskali. Women are living longer than ever before with Kisgali. When taken with an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant in postmenopausal women with HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, Kisgali is a pill that's significantly more effective at delaying disease progression versus an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant alone. Kiskali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. I have something for you. Hi. <laughs> I have something for you too. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. We are professional grade GMC. Welcome back. Now to a CBS2 investigation that's gotten national attention. We believed her and told her story before we saw the video. The city even tried to get a federal judge to shut us down, but we bulldogged it through. And we're glad we did. We reported on Anjanette Young's bad raid last year. And Miss Young's case is emblematic of the pattern we've exposed time and time again. This year, because of the efforts of the CBS2 investigators, Chicago police are now making changes in what happens before, during, and after a search warrant is executed. Here's our Dave Savini. I'm not moving until you show me something! Anjanette Young demands to see the warrant that led to the invasion by dozens of male officers into her apartment in February of 2019. Her raid was one of 50 plus botched raids uncovered during our now three year long probe. I just put my hands up and prayed that he wouldn't shoot me. Dozens of people, including children, had guns pointed at them or were handcuffed because police failed to do the proper research, failed to verify addresses, and just took the word of paid informants in getting their warrants. In the case of Anjanette Young, the target police were looking for lived in another unit in her apartment complex. She had never even heard of him, but she was the one who ended up held in handcuffs at gunpoint. A dozen police body cameras trained on her the whole time. Do you remember that moment when that rifle was pointed right at you? I believe that he would have shot me if I had done anything different than just stand there with my hands up. These children, how old are you, Deviana? Six. Have had their front doors broken down. 
and guns pointed at them, their siblings, and parents. Have you ever been afraid of the dark before this incident? No. You are watching children whose homes were wrongly raided, being deposed by lawyers defending the city of Chicago. It still hurts to watch. It's so disheartening for me to hear that these children are being... Are you doing okay? You know, traumatized over and over again. Can you take a break if that's okay? Now that these families are suing the city, the children are required to sit through lengthy depositions. They continue to cause um, systematic harm to the individual. And cost taxpayers too. The CBS2 investigators found since 2015, the city has paid outside law firms more than $2.5 million in fees for wrong raid cases alone. Can we please take a break if that's okay? A lot of these cases happened before my incident. I've gotten more resolution than they have, and it's just not fair. Chicago City Council recently approved a $2.9 million settlement for Ms. Young. Some aldermen say it's not enough. We've asked the mayor and Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown how they'll discipline officers who violate these new rules. So far, no specifics. In Young's case, Chicago police did take the involved officers off the streets pending a COPA investigation. But that was only after we aired the body camera footage nearly two years after the botched raid. This November, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability recommended a minimum one-year suspension for two sergeants connected to Young's raid. See how the story began? Just head to our website, cbschicago.com. You're watching CBS2 Investigators Get Results. We'll be right back. Feta, taste of Europe, authentic Greek cheese. You've been on the edge of your seat. Monsters of the Midway are in absolute force. You've held your breath to the final seconds. 23 puts it up. He sends it deep to one. You've been there for the thrill of victory. And we'll be with you for that next magic moment. You can bet on it. Bet Rivers, Chicago's hometown sports book. People were afraid I was contagious. I felt gross. It was kind of a shock after I started Cosentex. Four years clear. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentex. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentex. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections, some serious, and the lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to. Tell your doctor if your Crohn's disease symptoms develop or worsen. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Learn more at Cosentix.com. Sponsored by Jewel Osco. Fresh to your family. Injured in a car accident? Larry wins. This holiday season at Burlington, will you be surprised by the gifts or the deals? So many gifts for everyone. So many ways to save. You'll love the gifts. You'll love the deals. You'll love Burlington. Getting hosed again. Our exclusive series now going on three years and counting. It's our investigation into the city's broken water billing system and why the city hasn't done anything to fix it. One of our main protagonists, Vietnam vet and cabbie Rodney Andrews. We've fixed his problems. He got hosed. Then out of the blue, he just got bulldozed. So this is your garage? Yes, it is. What's left of it? Rodney Andrews is singing another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song again. You think someone's out to get you? If you were looking at right and wrong, they all wrong. Wrong. By the city, again. Cliff notes. So we're just trying to get this guy back. In when we went out to the Department of Finance, they sent us down here from the news. If it hadn't been for Channel 2, I might not be sitting here now. 
The CBS2 investigators. How you doing? Good. I'm Brad from Channel 2. We're here to pay this man's water bill. Advocated for Mr. Andrews since 2019. Boy, it's just a runaround. We got his bad water bill. Slash. Then. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. We got his water back. It's alive. We got water. Then you. How you doing, sir? Our CBS2 viewers. Got appliances for you? Got appliances for me. Yes, sir. We're uh, going to set you up with a brand new kitchen. Pitched in and fixed his house. All Mr. Andrews ever did is what he was asked, including Vietnam. First Infantry Division. From the bush to the bureaucracy. What was the harder fight, Vietnam or this fight with the city? The fight with the city. Right. Right. And now this. And my next door neighbor tells me they took your garage. I see you all the time on, on the news. All right, you're the neighbor, right? Yes. You won't be able to see this on the air. That we will. They talk to but but they don't do the walk. In August, the garage got a complaint. It sustained spring storm damage. Mr. Andrews said he'd fix it at an administrative hearing. City said okay. I'm thinking everything's all right. He planned in part to fix it, the wall, with these bricks. The bricks were valuable, but they took the bricks. They took the bricks. We knew something was off with the demo because we've actually seen it before. In all the cases where we've saved all those people, all that money and bad billing, ring it. Now, reverse it. Miss Camilla Batten, like Rodney, was hosed and bulldozed, charged for water for a property that didn't even exist because the city demoed it. They tore the house down. Sure did, they tore it down. The one thing both cases have in common. Now, they didn't tell me they was gonna tear the house down. I had no idea that this was gonna happen. Miss Batten was getting cancer treatment when her property was bulldozed. Yes. Mr. Andrews? Puff. It was gone away. A year ago, we'd just about undone the decades of damage done by the city to Mr. Andrews. Yeah. Bill wipes, water on, new appliances. Oh, Lord, okay, have mercy. Go. Now. Hey, y'all. How you doing? The city is back. Not too good. Not too good setting him back again. You seem defeated. It's just a rough situation. We can't fit all of the impact of a year's work in our half hour special, but you can see the extent of our investigations on our website, cbschicago.com. Or catch the full versions of these stories streaming on our end of the year special on CBSN Chicago. For the full schedule, head over to our social media sites. We'll post it there. For all of us here at CBS Chicago, and on behalf of the CBS2 investigators, I'm Brad Edwards. And I'm Erica Sargent. Thanks so much for watching.